Life is beautiful heißt das Lied, glaube ich. Dieses. That should do it. Well, no turning back now. How should we clean this up? I'm searching the room. Zweitausend neunzehn. Thompson Villa. This room is pure insanity. But I can't let it shake me. Why did you come here, Aaliyah? Remember the real reason you decided to investigate Morgan's house in the first place. We came here to find a missing girl. Patricia Clarkson isn't here. And he's done nothing except narrowly skirt the thin line of legality in all the right ways. He's so abnormal. How can there not be a single shred of evidence against him? Come on, Agent Jones. I know you're hiding something. Uh, what are you talking about? You've been watching him for four and a half years, haven't you? Hello, Bobby Titanium. Das Knurren war der Beweis, der Delmatina steckt hinter dem Ganzen und kann offensichtlich Besitz von Menschen nehmen. Deshalb auch das Knurren, Fall gelöst. Wahrscheinlich. Can you really stand here and tell me that you never saw a single one of the strange signs I'm picking up on now? Ich habe schon im ersten Teil immer den Dalmatiner verdächtigt. Die Beweislage spitzt sich zu. Uh, what signs? Deadly premonitions. Dum dum dum. Preparations for kidnapping or terrorist activities, sexual depravity, violent tendencies, self-mutilation. Or even just contacting a specific person periodically. Nope. Nada. He doesn't fit any of that. You think I'd really ignore something that obvious? I may be a schlub, but I'm still an FBI agent. Then why didn't you do anything about this room? Or did you merely choose to ignore his abnormal proclivities? You want to know what I did? I did my damn job! End of story! I was outside the entire time. How do you expect me to notice a room like this from out there? It's as simple as that. At least it was, until you dragged me into this whole mess. Don't blame me just because your big investigation ended up leading nowhere. Then tell me the truth. After seeing this room, can you really say that man is in his right mind? He kept this room a total secret from you for over four and a half years. No normal human is capable of such a feat. Only a true genius or a true monster. Can you really guarantee that he won't try anything if we just let him go here? Well... Then you need to help me. Find some sort of evidence that we can use to make him reveal what he's plotting. Okay, okay. Daniel Clarkson. The file said his only real talent was his ability to pick up women. But when I spoke with him in the warehouse, he seemed dignified, like a truly accomplished man. Marrying into the Clarkson family must have put him through a lot. Why do you think Jethro here survived? Why? 
I mean, doesn't he look like the kind of guy who'd die first in a horror movie? He married into the Clarkson family. He didn't possess Clarkson blood, so he had nothing to do with Helena Doman's plan. The blood purge thing? But if that was all there was to it, then Helena Doman wouldn't have killed anyone but Clarkson's, right? Yet a ton of the Clarkson gang members died, along with Sheriff Woods. <sighs> Doesn't add up. She did whatever it took to achieve her goals. She, but killing people outside of the Clarkson family was never a priority. Her ultimate goal was to cut off the Clarkson bloodline. Maybe he was always meant to be an assistant to the goddess of fertility. What, like a servant? He was the kind of person who was most in his element when he had someone to serve. Even afterwards, he let Patricia take over the estate, while he became her assistant. As soon as he settled into his role, the townspeople started to respect him. Now they practically revere him, and he's even earned himself a nickname. One-Armed Danny. Sehr kreative Name. So you think his life played out exactly the way Professor R planned it to go? Talk about tragic. Photograph of Patricia Clarkson. I thought she was imprisoned right here in this room. But there was no one here. Where could she be then? I was so positive, but she isn't here. There is something about this room, though. Agent Jones, what do you think? Uh, me? I'm not as smart as you. Why are you even asking me? Are you hiding something? <laughs> of course not. Knock it off. Me? Hiding something? <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Come on. I got nothing to hide. Ah, da steht im Hintergrund die Trommel, die wir von dem Priester bekommen haben. Unser Instrument, das uns irgendwie helfen soll, irgendwann mal. Ist aber nie eingetreten. I thought I would find answers in this room. I thought that Patricia would be here. Wäre vielleicht eine Nebenquest gewesen oder so. But I was wrong. This room is only filled with photos of people related to the case and the handiwork of a madman. Feels like I'm wandering through a heavy mist. Why is Morgan showcasing those women's photos? And that bed. Und wo hat er geschlafen, wenn auf seinem Bett überall komische Puppenteile liegen? Ist das nicht die wahre Frage? Sheriff Melvin Woods. I never met him myself, but his face makes him look like a very nice guy. His background and childhood didn't have any red flags either. Yet we're supposed to believe that he was one of the masterminds behind that entire incident? The one who took her in after the incident was Daniel Clarkson, the next in line to succeed the Clarkson family. He's the one that ended up raising her from that point onwards. Isn't fate strange? In the end, two people who were completely unrelated by blood ended up inheriting that house. Yeah, you're right. But sometimes I wonder, what is family anyway? Go back far enough, we're all strangers to one another. We're talking countless generations, marriages and birth, you know. Humans love to deify the rules they create. It's almost like that's been an unwritten law from the very start. If you loved someone from the bottom of your heart, would you ever be able to marry someone else? Or Whoa, uh, what are we talking about? I never heard of any kind of motive like that in any other murder case. I just keep feeling like we're being fed a story that he made up in his mind. True. 
Honestly, without having experienced what that's like, I can't really say what I'd do. But I'd never try and force love to happen, if it didn't seem like it was meant to be. There are 3.5 billion women on this planet. There's got to be more than one specific person who anyone can fall deeply in love with, right? But what if we were talking about pizza, not women? You just discovered the perfect ultimate pizza. But you aren't allowed to take even a single bite. Unless you kill someone for the cook. Have you ever loved someone with all your heart? <laughs> what kind of person do you take me for? That's my line. Is this supposed to be the altar from the site where Lise Clarkson's body was found? Why would he want to replicate that inside of his own home? There's no way this man is sane. Why did Lise have to die first? What is this? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Is this really an eichhörnchen? Could also be a rat. This room paints such a bizarre picture. But upon closer look, I can see some strange sort of pattern to it all. Was Morgan trying to recreate something with all this? If so, there must be a reason for all of these weird and hideous things. Na gut, die Jagdtrophäen sind klar, oder? Rotes Seil, was? Ich muss mal schnell schauen, was ich untersuchen muss, dass die Story weitergeht. Die Jagdtrophäen. Dann untersuchen wir erst alles andere. Rope tied around a lighting fixture. What could it mean? Ja, uh, uh, you sure it's okay to press that? Won't know until we try. Hey, Honda, danke fürs Folgen. Hi. Hey, hey, it's Woodstock. Look, a peace sign. Mm. Umgedrehtes Peace Sign. Ich habe mir nämlich schon gedacht, die Leichen sind so angeordnet. Also die, die Modelle der Leichen hier auf dem Bett. Wie dieses umgedrehte Friedenszeichen, das in Wirklichkeit ein Baum ist. Love and peace, man. Nur der untere Strich fehlt halt. Und der Kreis sowieso. Deswegen weiß ich auch nicht. Even I can figure out what this is from. It's Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin. Grateful Dead and Led Zeppelin. But I shouldn't have to explain it to a music nut like you, right? That isn't a peace mark. It's upside down. You don't need to be a music nut to see that. What? Who says that's the top part? If you're looking from Lisa's head, this is the top part, making it a big, fat peace mark. No. This is the ground. Where's your proof? The red seeds. Seeds go in the ground, right? That makes this wall the bottom. Lisa's head is clearly at the top. Period. <sighs> also, Agent Jones. 
Led Zeppelin never played at Woodstock. Bam! Destroyed. Okay. A woman so beautiful she felt like she could make it as an actress in Hollywood. And this is how she ended up. Sometimes it seems like God abandoned us humans a long time ago. I feel it more and more with each new case. No. No. Galena Clarkson went to California to become an actress. But things never took off for her, so she eventually returned home. Then she murdered her own daughter and ended up like this. Where did she go wrong? She did manage to appear in a few movies, right? Not as any characters with actual names. And never with much clothes on. So that's the only value they saw in her, huh? Sorry, that was insensitive. It's an everyday occurrence in that world. She was also bullied a lot. Bullied? How? They'd cut up her costumes, her scripts, and even her own clothes. Everywhere she went. Then after three years of that, her stylist chopped off a chunk of her hair. By accident. Are you kidding me? I did a little investigating on this. In the end, a self-titled Big Cheese producer tricked her. She almost ended up going into porn. <sighs> Not hard to imagine what would have happened after that. One witness said that after returning to Lou Carre, she refused to use scissors to cut anything. And da haben wir den Bezug zu den Scheren der Gegner. Im Spiel, aber immerhin. When Helena Doman attacked the estate, he just happened to be somewhere else. Weil ihr immer alles zerschnitten wurde oder so. Komisch. Whether it was through luck or simple coincidence, that's how he managed to survive. When Helena Doman returned home, someone must have let her inside. You think that was her brother-in-law, Daniel? I don't know. Well, alligators did chomp his arm off. He probably. Ah, oh, man, dialog übersprung. Sorry, das wollte ich nicht. You know, I don't think he had anything to do with this. Why not? You're making it out to be more complicated than it really is. That's always the problem with people like you. Too smart for your own good. Just get to the point. <sighs> Professor R marched straight through the front door to the mansion. She arrived right at her destination using the quickest route possible without having to undergo a single security check. I know. My question is, how was she able to do that? Because she's family. It doesn't matter if PJ disowned her. He never stopped loving his son. A father would never abandon his child, no matter how much they failed to fulfill his expectations. That's what being a parent is all about. Don't look at me like that. I know, I know, I don't have a son myself. But I have a father. He's still back in my hometown, managing the printing plant my grandfather started. He'll be turning 80 soon. He wanted me to take over the place, but as you can see, I'm out here. But I know how this whole thing works. Even though I haven't seen him in forever, the minute I go home, he'll welcome me with warm, open arms. I've seen the bedrooms of countless violent criminals, but this one is on a completely different level. Wirklich? <lacht> Bärenkopf mit einer Augenklappe und Zigarre, das geht zu weit. Sie hat schon viel kranken Scheiß gesehen, aber das überschreitet Grenzen. Ah, okay. It's beyond insane. Ja. 
<lacht> das geht gar nicht. Dann bin ich gespannt, was sie erst zu dem Reh mit der Perücke sagt, wenn der Bär mit der Zigarre sie schon so schockiert. I've seen the bedrooms of countless violent criminals, ah, genau das Gleiche. It's beyond insane. <lacht> ja, it's beyond insane. <lacht> Reagiert die nicht ein bisschen über? What's that? A hunting trophy. A brown bear. With a dragonfly eye patch. Why is it smoking a cigar? Ja, weil das offensichtlich den Clarkson Obermufti darstellt. It's probably supposed to represent Philip J. Clarkson's body. Ganz genau. And the elk is offensichtlich. Helena Doman. Genau. Moment. Helena? Wirklich? Ja, doch, die hatte einen Spitznamen. Lina, genau. So that's why it's got such good taste in fashion. And this one is Galena Clarkson? Why did he want to line up corpses that were killed in different places, all together in a single room? Red seeds? He's representing a human with a hunting trophy made from an animal. I feel like I'm looking at a piece of modern art done in really bad taste. Im Endeffekt. Ähm. Ah. Im Endeffekt deutet es alles darauf hin, als wäre die ganze Sache nach dem ersten Teil noch nicht gegessen gewesen. Als wäre der, der Tod wahrscheinlich eventuell von Forrest nicht genug gewesen. Als wäre da noch was. He was going back over the Lucare case together with the Greenvale case. Just as I thought these two cases are connected. But in a different way from what I originally thought. Anna Graham. The first victim of the Greenvale case. Her body was found hanging from a tree like a goddess being worshipped in a sanctuary. Meanwhile, Lise Clarkson was found on the bank of a river in an area that had been fashioned into an altar. The person who gruesomely ended the life of that young woman must be brought to justice. I completely agree. They both still had their whole lives ahead of them. The Lucare case and the Greenvale case. According to my investigation, the one key that links both cases is Francis Zack Morgan. But if we look at the cases from his point of view, we see one more connection. The red seeds are also present in both cases. I believed that he was the one who brought them to both towns. Das wäre natürlich ein Plot Twist, wenn das wirklich so wäre. Aber dann wird das wahrscheinlich anders präsentiert werden. Aber das wäre ein Plot Twist, wenn letztendlich im Grunde er einfach im Grunde die Samen selbst mit sich geführt hat und an die Tatorte gebracht hat und alles nur in seinem Kopf eine Verbindung hatte und eigentlich gar nicht zusammenhängt. Und er vielleicht nur irre ist. Aber das ist es wohl nicht. Sonst wird das hier nicht einfach so nebenbei mal in den Nebensatz erwähnt werden. Maybe. No. Never mind. He took in the daughter of the man who murdered his beloved wife and daughter. That's quite the feat. Sure seems like our friend Daniel here was just destined to suffer. Aber die Idee hat was reizvolles. Ja genau, ich finde schon auch, die Idee wäre, da hätte man auch zu einer coolen Story und zu einem coolen Plot Twist hinbiegen können, so nachträglich rückblickend. Dass dann so dieser Fight Club äh, Moment kommt, in dem dann auf einmal noch mal alles die wichtigsten Szenen gezeigt werden und dann sieht man das immer wieder wie er quasi im Endeffekt 
irgendwie selber eine Verbindung und irgendwie so ein Ritual draus macht, ohne es selber zu wissen. Irgendwie sowas hätte man da vielleicht machen können. Naja. We crossed the entire continent and married into the Clarkson family, all for the sake of the woman he loved. But then the love of his life became a drug addict and ended up murdering their very own daughter. And she too was murdered as part of her big brother's conspiracy. Finally, in order to prove that he could take responsibility for the family, he gave up his right arm to his father-in-law. Who got blown to bits soon afterwards. And to add insult to injury, all the inheritance went to PJ's secret heir. If I had to go through all that, I'm pretty sure I'd go crazy. I don't know. What do you mean? He found someone he loves so much. He moved across the entire continent just to be with her. Less beautiful. It also seems that he was eventually able to make an identity for himself and Lucare as well. Ja, aber ich dachte, Lucare wurde komplett weggespült von Katharina. Haben die das nicht gesagt? Naja, vielleicht nicht komplett, komplett. Hat man halt wieder aufgebaut. After I found his daughter's body, I interrogated him for a bit. When I told him we were gonna do an autopsy on her body, he didn't react violently in any way. I remember him looking relieved and tired. Kind of like someone who'd just woken up from a coma. She planned a string of murders all in order to restore the Clarksons to their former glory, right? Yeah. According to Morgan's story. Matches up with the files, too. But the only proof of that is the confession she privately gave to Morgan just before she died. Galena Clarkson was also murdered immediately after she confessed. Don't you think it's all a little too convenient? Well, story-wise, yeah. And the sacrifices. None of the FBI's official records contain an example of an actual human sacrifice. Aside from the cases that Francis Zack Morgan handled, that is. There are tons of examples of animal sacrifice, though. And remember the witch hunts back in the Middle Ages? Meaning? Meaning, there are always exceptions to the rule. And Morgan alluded to the existence of some sort of journal, right? I think he said he read it in Professor R's lab. If we could find that, maybe this would all become easier to swallow. Komm ich jetzt mit dem beiden noch nach Le, Le Carré? Weil das war irgendwie cool. So zehn Jahre später. Aber dann hätten die die ganze Stadt ein bisschen umdesignen müssen und so. Ich glaube nicht. Aber das wäre irgendwie schon cool. The report didn't mention anything about a journal. And if it truly did exist, it surely would have been submitted as evidence. So the ganzen Charaktere jetzt, ah, das wäre so cool, zehn Jahre später treffen, aber das, das, das halte ich für sehr unwahrscheinlich. Zu viel Arbeitsaufwand. Unless he tried to cover it up on purpose. Or? Unless the journal never existed in the first place. Exactly. He was taught how to rule as a child, never confided in anyone, and married for purely political reasons. Then he prospered so much that he became powerful enough to rule an entire town on his own. But in the end, his own child betrayed him and ended his entire clan in a series of violent deaths. If that was your life, how would you look back on it? Yeah, beats me. I wasn't born into a rich family, nor was I ever taught how to rule. And for what it's worth, I've also never knocked up a young ex-actress. But I guess the one thing we can say is that any good life needs balance. Get too hung up on one thing and you lose sight of everything else. And if you betray someone, you'll get betrayed too. Someone thinks they can step all over people and then live out the rest of their life in peace. They're fooling themselves. We always get to see how those people end up in our line of work. In the end, they die horrible deaths. That is why pizza is the only thing I trust. Pizza never betrays you. 
This case took place in Lucare, and centered around the Clarksons. Oppressive authority, cross-purposes, madness, and love. But Katrina took the truth along with many innocent lives and buried it all at the bottom of the swamp. But there's one truth that can never be washed away. This all started with the death of a young girl. I think she's the biggest mystery out of all the people involved with the Lou Carre case. Ja, ich habe noch nie drüber nachgedacht, aber wer hat sie eigentlich umgebracht dann in der Gefängniszelle? Na gut, wahrscheinlich dann Marvin, jetzt wo man weiß, dass er der Fädenzieher war. Ja. How could she agree to kill her own daughter? Then herself. Das ist auch eine gute Frage. It's hard to imagine ever being okay with that. No matter how depressed I became. Wegen der Droge halt, wegen den roten Samen. Why did she believe what Professor R told her? The whole blood purge story. There's no way anyone in their right mind would ever believe that. You got a point. No matter how badly all the bullying must have broken her heart. I just find it too hard to believe. Pizza never betrays you. Das muss ich merken, ja. <lacht> Eine Weisheit fürs Leben. Don't you? Yeah. But you shouldn't think too hard about it. Why not? Human beings don't make sense. We always do things that can't be explained with common logic. Especially when it concerns our parents, children, and siblings. Mm -mm. That doesn't satisfy me. No matter how irrational an action may be, I want to know exactly why that person made such an irrational decision. Otherwise, what hope do we have? You're never going to be in a situation where everything makes perfect sense. Just stop sticking your nose so deeply into everything. That's my advice, as an old guy who's lived twice as long as you. Was? Wer ist nie im Leben doppelt so alt wie die? You and I are nothing alike. You decided to give up on your life and spend the rest of your time on Earth sitting around and playing Sudoku. <sighs> the 16-year-old girl who was murdered in Lucare in 2005. After that, she remained frozen for 14 years, waiting for someone to discover her. I was the one who found her, which means I have a duty to lay her soul to rest. Everyone thinks that the principal thing to the tree is the fruit. But in point of fact, the principal thing to it is the seed. Now I know why Lise Clarkson was murdered first. Lisa's death was Professor R having second thoughts. According to Morgan, her plan was to perform parricide and filicide, then commit suicide. Those were the three deaths necessary to complete the ritual, remember? Which means she technically could have killed Patricia first. That would have been the best way to delay any interference from the Clarksons themselves. The reason she didn't kill Patricia first is because Lena was actually following a different plan inside her own mind. Or perhaps she merely changed her plan as she followed through with it. At some point, new emotions started to take root within her. She had second thoughts about something. And in order to shake those off, she used Galena to kill Lise first. In order to cut off any possible escape, but that only made her plan move ahead quicker than she could have ever imagined. Which forced her to rush right up to the end with those misgivings always in the back of her mind. Huh? Wait, hold on. Yeah, you lost me. What are you talking about? In other words, at some point, Helena Doman decided that she wanted to make Patricia the next heir. The blood purge wasn't for the goddess of fertility. It was for their daughter, Patricia. 
Wait, are you saying Helena knew from the start that Sheriff Woods would die with Candy? That's the only explanation I can think of. Huh. Remember, this is only assuming that everything Morgan told us was true. Until I can trust that man, this is all nothing more than conjecture. Warum sollte man anzweifeln, dass er Ketten auf seinen Totem hängt und dadurch wird seine Betäubungswaffe zu einem Magnum? Ich sehe da keine, keine zweifelhaften Aussagen. Insofern wird das schon alles stimmen, was er gesagt hat. Uh, considering how insane this all is, it sounds perfectly believable to me. <lacht> ja, eben sage ich doch. 